Anyway, uh, the uh, Daily Mail uh, is next, and the mood today of the Daily Mail, the first one of the week, is... Oh, no, don't touch it. Don't, 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 don't! Oh! <laughs> um, and it's uh, that water cannon might be used. Water cannon might be used uh, to... to keep the rioters in check, as opposed to Not just to to give a good wash. No. Although... He, so I suppose purposes. I think that, you know, I think they should, they should build up to cannon. I think they should start with maybe water pistols. pistols. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just make, make certain ones slightly moist, cos at least then you can, you can pick out the troublemakers, yeah. rather than a, a cannon which is... They used to use in Northern Ireland. Yeah. Uh, they've never been used on the, on the uh, UK mainland before, yeah. so... Uh, do, you uh, think, I, do you think they should be used? No, I don't think they, they should be used yet. Um, yet. God, imagine how cold that would be, cos... It's freezing. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's the it's hurts, so. But then they're going out in T-shirts and nothing else yes. anyway, so I don't think so they're so really so worried so about so temperature. So you don't think they should be used yet? So you want more rioting and then they should be used? I didn't say I wanted more rioting. Well, no, doesn't no, mean, just because I, I don't want them used, yeah, I want more rioting. But, but, but you imply by saying you don't want them used yet that there is a time in the future when you'd quite I'll like them I'll tell you what, used. I'd like to see better preparation for, for marches and better uh, uh, methods used... To, I can't believe that this that, that that this it was allowed to get to this extent after the first one. It just mm. absolutely beggars belief that they they uh, they have this extraordinary uh, ability to kind of keep anti-terrorism in check, but yet with uh, anarchist groups, which are probably using quite crude methods to actually marshal other anti-anarchist groups and protesters who have nothing to do with the actual uh, uh, protest in hand, that they're allowed to do this. It does... I find mm. that extraordinary. So I think it's... I think there should be ways of getting around this rather than being, uh, you know, brutal and using And I think there's just going to be more and more rights, so they've got to have a... Well, has to, they sure... I, 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 it, I, it does... We're going to have one it, right here if you don't get your last paper <laughs> through, <laughs> by the way. Uh, the last one is in the... Uh, the Daily Mail, the mood today of the Daily Mail oh. is... Um, <laughs> I'm not coming out! <laughs> I'm not coming out! <laughs> um, it's... the... <laughs> They're going to be reviewing your show at the Pigalle on Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> this is about the McCanns, just when you thought, uh, you know, l leave them alone, they're, they're, they're innocent. Um, this actually came from WikiLeaks. Um, that basically, but there was a conversation or, or uh, communication between the Portuguese, the British Portuguese ambassador, and the American ambassador to Portugal. Um, that basically said that the, 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 the British police were mounting evidence against the McCanns. It wasn't just to, the Portuguese there has police. To be, there has to be, and, and the McCanns have, have complained bitterly about being a suspect before. Yeah. But if you are the last people to see a person who is presumed dead. Yeah. Alive, you are on the list of suspects. Of course, that is, that is normal I know. police I know. procedure. Yeah. But, yeah. but to be fair yeah. to them, what they've said, what some a spokesman for them has said, this is an entirely historic note. That's more than three years old. You know, yeah. it's, it's not really news. Uh, the next one is the Daily Mail. The mood today of the Daily Mail is, I've got a lovely pair. Ooh. <laughs> 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 always, always use a prop if you can. Um, this is uh, about the BBC, and again, it's all uh, to do with uh, the, the freezing of the licence fee, which basically means uh, aspects of the BBC and kind of channels at the BBC are going to be under threat, including BBC Three and BBC Four. Um, and it's, you know, it, it, it would be a, a huge shame if, if a channel like BBC Four went, I think, particularly. It's BBC but... Three. I love and BBC, BBC Three. Three. But I think, Is I it mean... not just possible that you could put the good shows and those two channels onto BBC One and BBC Two, get rid of the rubbish shows and yeah. repeats on BBC well, One and like BBC Two, cult. and have two shows? Well, I think what it should. Great shows well, I think like I think what it should cult. do. Should we should have a, a we should have a, a, a broadcasting network that is a broadcaster, not a narrowcaster. And I think as soon as you start to just say, well, you're 18 to 30, so you should only watch this channel yeah. and you should only watch that yeah. if you're a bit of a. And I, you know, the joy of when we were growing up was that you saw a documentary next to a drama next to a, you know, it was a. A, a good mix, a potpourri. Yeah. Before we were all spoiled with too much. But uh, would, would you? And with filth. But would you say? Filth. Would you say though that? Because uh, I think the quality of BBC Two went down when they brought in BBC Three and BBC Four. That it wasn't enough to go about. Yeah. And so they drain the quality of the other one to prop up two channels that hardly anybody watches. And then, well, then what they'll do is they'll just repeat the the, the top the shows on BBC Two at a really weird time yeah, when yeah. no one's watching anyway. Yeah. You know. Anyway. So it's a. Uh, 
But I think they, they do. I think both channels make some really good programs yeah. Yeah, on three really and do. four. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Steve, uh, before we move on to your next story, yeah. uh, a lot of people are very interested in your mood of the day thing. Yes. A lady called Robin Pole Dancer uh, has been in touch. Yes. And uh, she loves your highlight uh, of the morning. It's her highlight of the morning when she's on her oh. pole. And uh, oh. hello. So Steve, uh, if you'd like to do uh, for Robin uh, oh. the mood of the Daily Mail today, please. Uh, the mood today of the Daily Mail is. What's a pint? What's a pint? <laughs> um, page 30. <laughs> it's about the bank, a Swiss bank, uh, the Swiss firm UBS have issued. Is it, this is a directives about what to wear. Uh, uh, appropriate clothing to, to wear uh, in their bank, and it's a 44 page dress code. <laughs> 40. I is want to right? see this. I, this is this would be great Christmas reading. And it's things like <laughs> men are told to choose ties with patterns that match the bone structure of the face. <laughs> hey? So Swiss, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely... I think going to say women are supposed to turn up in cuckoo clocks. Or well, I tell you what, they're not. They're, they're no uh, flesh-coloured, uh, flesh-coloured underwear. Avoid flashy jewellery. So uh, I, I can't imagine that Jimmy Savile will be wor working in that particular <laughs> bank. <laughs> Artificial colour contrast express. Ex uh, it's, it's your hair dye. You can't have hair dye. Uh, because it clashes with the natural tone of your skin, unless, of course, you have the, 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 the tone of a tandoori chicken. So, <laughs> um, uh, so uh, next one is in the Daily Mail again. I've got three Daily Mail stories. Story. This one is um, basically your brain doesn't stop developing. It's, it, 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 as originally people thought, around teenage years, the brain stops developing. This is rubbish, according to... And I thought it would be another of those University of Please Yourself, California, but this is... Uh, <laughs> This is a finding from the University College in London that says hey. our brains are... Wait! Oh, we got yeah, one here. We got CIA. Yeah, we got big up the, the London. Um, <laughs> Shouldn't you be out burning down London or something like that now? <laughs> Isn't that what you've been doing recently, though? Um, basically, if we still have, we're still <laughs> having tantrums. Some people still have tantrums in their 30s and 40s, and it's because... Our brain is still evolving. It still hasn't uh, hasn't stopped evolving. I knew there was evolving. a reason. Yeah. yeah. Well, that explains Nigel Havers then. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Let it go. Sorry, Nigel. Sorry, Nigel. I think he's a bit <laughs> older than forty, though, isn't he? Fifty-nine. Yeah. He's fifteen. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and one final one. It's a <laughs> guess who this is. This is a wonderful picture. Um, I guess who's uh, who that is. Robert Downey Jr. Know? Robert Downey Jr. I thought it looked a bit like Liam Neeson. Yeah. Yeah. It is, in fact, Glenn Close. Eh? Hey? What? Yeah. 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 Amazing. That's not a story, it's just a picture. But there you go. <laughs> and is that just how she dresses these days to get parts because Hollywood hates older women? No, 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 no. This is her thing from the, the singular life of Albert Nobbs. Uh, <laughs> not my words, the words. <laughs> The words of the writers of that particular film. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mel's writing about knobs, is it? Yeah, hobnobs. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> why I didn't have the Daily Mail oh, no. today. Have a copy. Do you want a copy? <laughs> Last <laughs> mood of the Daily Mail this year. <laughs> don't, don't worry, it's all going to be fine. Next year will be the best year we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> After the break, should parents should parents interfere in their offspring's love lives?